Hello, my name is Magnus Petersen. This is my tutorial number 11 on TensorFlow, and this is about so-called adversarial examples. Before we start, I just want to say that I'm very happy that these tutorials are useful to so many people. And I can see from the statistics that people from all over the world are watching these videos. And I'm very curious, so if you want to share a few words about your background and what you want to use TensorFlow for, you can leave a comment below the video. And I do read all the comments, but I unfortunately don't have time to respond to all of them. Okay, let's get started with this tutorial. Once again, we will be using the Inception version 3 model, which is a state-of-the-art convolutional neural network. It is very complicated, and the structure is shown here. Tutorial number 7 goes into more detail about the Inception model. And the idea with adversarial examples is that we take an original input image, and we add some specialized noise to the image, and we feed this noisy image to the Inception model, and then we want it to misclassify the image to some class that we have set as a target class. In this example, we will use class number 300, which is a bookcase. So we want to turn this image of a man, this is Willy Wonka from the old version of the movie, and by adding some specialized noise, we want the inception model to make a highly confident classification that this is really a bookcase. And we could have chosen any other class number, and you can do this in the exercises, but this is just to show how absurd we can get the classification to be. And the noise we're showing in this image and the images below is greatly amplified. In reality, the no noise is small, and it is in fact so small that the human eye cannot tell the difference between the original image and the noise image. And we will see several examples of this below. So like I said, the idea is we have an original input image, we add some noise, we send it through the inception model, and then we have to hack the inception model a little, and I'll show you how to do this below, because we have to add another loss function, and then we get the gradient of this loss function with regard to the noisy input image, and using this gradient, we will update the noise. So what the gradient is telling us is how we need to modify the noise in order to move the classification towards our desired target class, which is the bookcase, or class number 300. So as usual, we have a bunch of imports, and then we download the inception model from the internet, and then we load the inception model, and now we will start to hook up our new machinery for finding the adversarial examples. So we need to make some changes to the inception model, and we need to feed data into the model, and we need to get data out of the model. So first we need a reference to the tensor for the resized image, and this is because the inception model, the way it's implemented here, is that it resizes any input image to 299 by 299 pixels. And because we are adding noise, we don't want the resizing algorithm to interfere with the noise. We want to add raw noise to the raw image. That is why we are feeding a resized image, so that we are bypassing the resizing algorithm. And then we need a reference to the output of the softmax classifier, which tells us which class the input image is. And we call this ypred, as we have done in the previous tutorials as well. And we want to add a new loss function, because this apparently doesn't exist in the saved inception model that we are using. And we will use something called cross entropy, and we will do that in just a minute. And the cross entropy function needs something called the logits of the softmax classifier of the inception model. And these are basically just unscaled outputs. The softmax classifier basically just scales and normalizes the logits. All right, so now we want to add the loss function to the computational graph for the inception model. And we also need the gradient of this loss function as I showed in the flowchart above. So we need to make a width block and we take the graph from the inception model and we tell TensorFlow that this must be the default graph within this width block. And now we're gonna add certain things to this computational graph. The first thing we want to add is a placeholder variable because we want to supply the target class number. For example, this could be 300 for the bookcase class. So we add a placeholder variable like this, and this is just like in the previous tutorials where we were building neural networks ourselves. And then we add the loss function, and this is a softmax cross entropy function, and we are supplying the logits that we got out of the model above, and we are supplying the placeholder variable for the target class number. And here we get a gradient for the loss function with regard to the input image of the inception model. 
And this is one of the magic parts about TensorFlow. And let me show you why. So here we have the flowchart once again. And this is very, very complicated. I don't know if there's maybe a hundred different modules here or something like that. And all of these are built from basic mathematical building blocks. And what this means is that TensorFlow can automatically go through this entire graph and apply something called the chain rule of differentiation, which allows us to find the mathematical expression for the gradient of this loss function over here with regard to any other tensor in the graph, including the tensor for the input image here. And we can then use this gradient to tell us how we need to modify the noise in the input image to move the classification towards what we want it to be. And what we're doing here is very similar to what we would be doing if we are training the neural network itself, except that instead of optimizing all the variables and the neural network, we are instead optimizing the noise that we are overlaying the input image. But the idea is very similar, and we are using some of the same machinery inside TensorFlow to do this. Okay, so now we have made some small changes to the TensorFlow graph, and we now need to create a session so that we can execute this graph. And we do that here. And here we have a helper function for finding the noise that we're going to add to the input image, so it creates an adversarial example. And this basically just implements the optimization that we described in the flowchart above. So the function takes a file path for the input image, and this has to be a JPEG image. And then it takes a class number for the target class. And for example, this could be a 300 for the bookcase class. And then we have the noise limit, which is how much noise may be added or subtracted from each color in each pixel of the input image. And we set this to a 3.0 by default. And I will discuss further below how much this is in terms of percentage of the whole range of values that are possible. It's actually very low, which means the noise that we are adding is imperceptible to humans. And then we have the required classification score for the target class. And the default value is 0.99 or 99%, which means that we stop the optimization once the target class reaches 99%. And then we have a max number of iterations, which defaults to 100. And this is just in case we cannot find the noise to add to the input image that gives us a classification score of 99%, then we break the optimization after 100 iterations. So now let's go through this function and see what it does. So first we create a feed dict for inputting to the TensorFlow graph. And this feed dict holds the input image. And then we execute the graph so we get out the predicted class scores and the resized image. And the source class, that is the class number that the inception model originally classifies the input image as, is the index into this array, which is found with the argmax function. And this is the associated classification score. Then we look up the class name for the source class and the name for the target class. And then we initialize the noise to zero. So now we are ready to perform the optimization and we do that in this loop here. So we start by creating the noisy image and we do this by adding the noise to the resized image. And at first the noise is zero, but later on in this loop, we will update the noise. And then we ensure that the noisy image is within the range of valid pixel values, which means every single pixel color has to be a value between zero and 255. And we are doing this because we don't want to cheat. We want to make sure that the input image that the inception model sees has valid colors. If some of these values were negative or beyond 255, then it would no longer be a valid image. It would not be an image that we could get from a camera, for example. So we would be cheating. But because we limit these values, the noisy image is a valid image that we could potentially get from a camera. Then we create a feed dict for inputting the noisy image to the computational graph, as well as the target class number. So we are inputting the noisy image to the tensor and the graph for the resized image and the target class for the placeholder variable that we created above. And then we run the graph to get the predicted class scores as well as, as the gradient. And then we get the scores and these are also known as the probabilities or the confidence that the inception model has classified the input image as the source class and as a target class. I prefer to call these for scores instead of probabilities because they are not really probabilities and they are also not really confidence values in the 
statistical sense of the word, like confidence intervals. And then we calculate the maximum of the absolute gradient values, and we ensure that this is somewhat greater than zero. And then we calculate the step size. And I've chosen this kind of heuristic formula, which ensures that in each step of the optimization, we change at least one pixel value in the noise by a significant amount. And you can try and change this formula to see if you can make the optimization converge faster. I found that this worked quite well. And then we print the score for the source class and for the target class and some statistics for the gradient. And if the classification score for the target class is less than the required score, then we update the image noise by following the gradient downwards. We are subtracting it and we are scaling it by the step size that we just calculated. And then we limit the noise. And in the other case, where the classification score for the target class is greater than the required score, we break the optimization process and we return the image and the noise image and the noise and so on. And now we're done with the optimization and we have found the noise that we need to add to the input image in order to make the inception model misclassify it as our desired target class. So here we have a helper function for plotting the input image and the noise and the noise image. And this is fairly straightforward, so I won't go through that. And here we have another helper function, which basically just combines the above two functions. So first it finds the noise that we have to add to the input image to create the adversarial example. And then we plot the image and the noise and so forth. And we also print some statistics for the noise. So let's see some examples of running these functions. And in the first example, we take an input image of a parrot and we want to find the adversarial noise that causes the inception model to misclassify the image as a bookcase. And we set the noise limit to 3.0, we set it down here. And again, this means that each pixel color is only allowed to change by a maximum of plus or minus 3.0. And each pixel color is a value between zero and 255. So a change of plus minus 3.0 corresponds to only about 1.2% of the range of possible values. And because the noise is so small, it cannot be perceived by the human eye. And we set the required classification score to 0.99 or 99%. So we stop the optimization when we have found the noise that makes the inception model believe that the parrot is a bookcase with 99% score or 99% probability or confidence. So this is what it looks like when we run it. And I've already done it, but it only takes a few seconds. So in the first iteration, the score for the source class, which is the Macau or the parrot class is 97.38%. So the inception model is very certain that the input image shows a parrot and the score for the target class is 0.00%. So the inception model is very certain that the image does not show a bookcase. The minimum gradient value is minus 0.001329 and the maximum gradient value is 0.001370. And using the formula for calculating the step size, we get a step size of 5110.94. So the step size is very large, but if you multiply the maximum gradient value or the maximum of the absolute of these two with the step size, you should get something like a value of seven. And when we have updated the image noise, and we calculate the classification scores once again. Now the score for the source class, the parrot class has dropped to 88.87%. And the score for the target class has increased very slightly. And this continues. So the score for the source class continues to drop. Eventually it gets the score for the source class way down to 2.4%. And then the score for the target class starts to increase. So here in iteration seven, it's about 7% and iteration nine, it grows to 16% and so forth. And eventually after 20 iterations, it has reached 97%. And after 25 iterations, it has reached 99%. So after 25 iterations, we have found this noise here and it is shown very amplified because if we only showed it with the noise values being between minus three and plus three, this would just be grayscale, it would be very hard to see that there would be any noise at all. So this is greatly amplified. And here we have the original input image, which shows a parrot. 
and the Inception model has classified it as a Macau or a parrot with a score of 97.38%. And once we add this noise and we get this noisy image, but to the human eye, it looks exactly the same as the original image. But there is a little noise. This is the noise when it is shown amplified. But now the Inception model says that this is a Macau with 0.00 score of probability. And it says it is a bookcase with a score of 99.12%. So now the Inception model is very certain that this image shows a bookcase instead of a parrot. But to a human eye, these images are exactly the same. So let's look at another example. Here we have the image of Elon Musk. And already after six iterations, we have found the noise that makes the Inception model classify this image as a bookcase. Originally, if it's just the raw image, the Inception model is not really certain what it is. And you may remember this from tutorial number seven that maybe it thinks it's a sweatshirt or something else. It's not certain, but we can still find the adversarial noise that makes the Inception model very certain that this image shows a bookcase. Even though to a human eye, these images are exactly the same. And we can also look at the statistics for the noise. So the lowest noise value is minus three and the highest is plus three because this is our limit for the noise. But on average, the noise is about zero and the standard deviation is about 0.7. And here's another example. And this is the new version of Willy Wonka. And for the original image, the Inception model thought that this image might show sunglasses and it gave it a score of 31.48%. And again, remember from tutorial number seven that we had a discussion about whether or not this made any sense. But anyway, the Inception model said that this might be sunglasses. But once again, we can find the adversarial noise. And when we add it to the image, the Inception model now thinks that this is a bookcase with a score of 99.03%. To a human, these two images look exactly the same. But I don't know if you could try and tilt your computer monitor a little or see it from a, a downward angle or something like that. And then you might see that the noise that is out here in the white areas has changed. It has now become some patterns with sort of wavy lines in them. So the, the noise we have added have created these strange patterns in this white area here, which I can see if I tilt my computer screen. And here we have another example for the old version of the Willy Wonka movie. And the Inception model thought that the original image shows a bow tie with a high, very high score of 97.22%. But if we add some adversarial noise, the image becomes misclassified as a bookcase again with a score of 99.72%. So it would seem that we can take any image we want and find the specialized adversarial noise by the optimization process that we have implemented above. And we can get the inception model to, to misclassify the input image as whatever we want, apparently. And there's ongoing research into this problem. And I encourage you to do an internet search for recent papers on the subject, because this is a huge problem. And it looks like that it's a general problem for neural networks and other machine learning algorithms. And it also looks like that the adversarial noise is common to different neural networks. So if we make another network, then the inception model, the adversarial noise would still work. So there is something fundamentally and deeply problematic with this. Imagine if you are in a self-driving car and the car uses a neural network to classify signs on the road and classify what it sees. Is this a pedestrian? Is it a dog? Is it a car? Is it something we have to, do we have to stop the car? Can we continue driving or what can we do? But can you trust it? If the neural network is so easy to fool? I don't think so. We need to understand what is going on here. And maybe you can find the solution to this problem. I have made some suggestions for exercises and if you try and solve these, you will become better at TensorFlow and maybe you will also find some ideas for making original research that can solve this problem with adversarial examples. And you can download the source code by clicking on the link below the video.